Mm-hmm. As it is 5.30, uh, I'd like to begin the uh, October, is this the 13th? Yes. Uh, Water and Sewer Department meeting. Um, with, and we'll begin with the um, superintendent updates, please. Frank? Thank you. I should say while we're um, remote, there's uh, Frank Fournier, the uh, superintendent, Steve Bishop, commissioner, I'm Luke Grant, commissioner. We have Tara McManus from Weston and Sampson. And we have Steve Peterson from Weston and Sampson. Uh, now, Frank, please. Go ahead. Sure thing. All right. Uh, remind everybody uh, from the last meeting we had probably three weeks ago. We had some uh, problems associated with the utility crews working up on uh, East Main Street. The, uh, the areas that the utility crews are working in kind of fall into a new gray area where the state has widened the, the road easement. Crews are installing utilities in areas that uh, are basically unmarkable by any of the utilities um, for the plans or anything that they have. So uh, it goes without saying it's, uh, it's going to be a problem and it has been a problem. Uh, Two weeks ago, the National Grid was out installing a new pole. Uh, installed the pole without a problem. Unfortunately, the guy wire that was drilled in uh, found the uh, private sewer line for North Cottage. Uh, we re responded, um, assisted with uh, providing parts for the repair. It was fixed by a private contractor because it is a private line, and the parts will be returned to us. Uh, just one more, one more headache out there for these areas now that the road has been substantially widened in some areas that uh, the utilities, even owned or private, are, are becoming difficult to locate. Um, this was marked out by North Cottage. They had a, a professional come in and mark the line and uh, had some issues with uh, it didn't actually go straight in that one area. So again, as built are, are very important and uh, we're dealing with sections that uh, there are very few plans or, or anything on or anybody's taken the time to venture that far um, I believe you'd have to go to town hall and look at some of the historical data, possibly if there was an upgrade to a septic system or something like that, they would show on their plans of water service or gas service being relocated. Sewer main, not so much, but uh, it's, I think it's going to be a reoccurring problem. That private sewer main, Frank, is that, you know, was in the shoulder all the way down. I remember when that went in, yep. and uh, it's not even that deep is the problem. Right. Yeah, they, they went around something in this area here. If you stood uh, manhole to manhole and you can physically see them, you would assume it goes in a straight line. They didn't. If they went around something in the ground for whatever reason, whether it was mass drainage that's there or ledge, something they couldn't move, and uh, that's just what's going to happen. And I think we're going to see that be a reoccurring problem. So luckily we were able to uh, go out there and assist them with that, and it was taken care of within a, a reasonable short period of time. And uh, there were no impacts to any customers that were still able to flow, you know, just uh, had a little diversion for a while. Um, transition over, we had uh, probably about a week or so after that. Uh, I'll call it a water leak for lack of better terms that I don't want to speak of. There was a tractor trailer unit uh, decided to try and turn his 18 wheeler around in the middle of Route 123. Uh, while he was spinning his trailer around, he uh, cautiously backed up a little further than he should, didn't notice the old hydrant from 1940, and uh, basically pushed it over and broke it off at the main. It was not a breakaway hydrant, it was a, a solid sleeve hydrant. The uh, over 100,000 gallons of water within a few minutes were, were dumped from that location. We had uh, actually a crew that was uh, in the area. They responded and thankfully, we had, it was one of the valves that we had actually used the valve exerciser on the previous fall. So we were able to get the cover off. It wasn't rock solid and cemented in, and we were able to shut it off. And actually, I responded later that night once we were able to gather enough people to work, and um, we replaced the hydrant in its existing location with the existing lateral. So we were kind of on the fence about doing that because it is the portion of pipe that's going to be abandoned eventually by the Mass DOT project. But we figured, uh, not knowing at what sequence it's going to happen, it could be four weeks from now, it could be four years from now. So we installed a new hydrant at the location and uh, knock on wood, we didn't have one call. An area like that, any type of flow that we would have had, especially on the old pipe, we would have been out there for hours. Uh, wow. Crushing, you know, everything that's tied into that is the inter interconnected main. Uh, very impressed with uh, the water quality coming from the treatment facility. I know I've heard from a few different people who typically 
would be replacing their filters after we went by with the flushing program. Right. You know, haven't had to do it. Or even out that far away from the facility to have the hydrant impacted. Right. Yeah. So now, is there a back charge to that operator for this? We did. Um, charge him for the hydrant? We will charge him for the full repair, the installation of the hydrant, the overtime for the guys, the machine, the, the truck. Uh, it will go to his insurance company. The police were able to catch the person, get his information. Uh, it's a trucking company out of Canada. I'm not sure how hard it's going to be to, to get a hold of them and see if they're going to pay. I did that one time, and um, the bigger fleets from Canada are self insured, and I had to call the company myself. My insurance wouldn't do it. Right. Um, I speak decent college French, <laughs> and I Frenched my way in to get to the vice president and said, look, I now know where you are. I'm going to come up and disable your fleet, or you're going to give me a check. Yep. Yeah, I mean, if it, honestly, if he would have been two or three feet. It was feet, wild. Either way, he the, guy was, the guy was sleeping and driving. Yeah. Crazy. I was in my low bed, and um, one of these big 53-foot box trailers bumps into my low bed and my lug nuts on my driver's side are actually catching the rim of his tractor trailer rear trailer and throwing the trailer up six inches <laughs> and i was moving a, um an army six by six with a canvas top so i was going 52 53 miles an hour when i hit 55 the canvas started blowing up and i had a, an army guy with me who could only load and unload on his base army guy is flipping out i'm like we're in a tractor trailer Nothing's gonna happen. This is okay. I can do this. And it's boom, boom. I'm like, sooner or later he's gonna wake up. I saw what was happening. He was like this. And this was so long ago. It was pre-texting, so I know he wasn't texting. He was sleeping. So I uh, make a long story not so long. He woke up, and we all pulled over. And I was like, I gotta say, when did you come into the country? What what time did you cross the border? Do you have any paperwork? I radioed to my office and said, I need a copy of a state here. He was like, what do you want me to do? I said, I want to know when he came into our country. We're well below, you know, it's probably eight out of ten hours from the border. Well, you know, figure out where he is. So this is the same problem. But uh, that's something to keep an eye on. We're going to have to, um, like, send a registered return receipt letter to his office, the carrier's office. And um, then... We have to put the st our Massachusetts State Police as a CC on all communications because if they have a problem in our state, they can no longer cross through our state, is how it went to me. And it all, I think, with um, this, this trip at permits and all that nonsense, so for the interstate commerce and now international commerce, so if it trips up, State nonsense at the border. I bet next time that carrier comes in with anybody of that carrier, they, my guy had over a hundred. They called them units, and it was it was cheaper for him to have like an umbrella over the whole fleet and then self-insure each policy, self-insure each truck. Right, right. It was crazy, <laughs> but I got it. Yeah. <laughs> it was, but the international stuff is that's, not, that's why they do that crazy stuff. Right. But we can't stand for it. No, no, it's definitely not something we're going to let go away. Um, most of the accidents, unfortunately, that happen around here are from motor vehicles and not TT units. So it's, it's a different ballgame. You know, they have a whole different level of impact. Right. That's too bad. Right. Yeah, we, like I said, we, we get lucky on that one. And when the road widens, do we, re, do we repo that hydrant? Is it worth grabbing that and taking it when we decommission the line? Is that part of the... As part of the project, that will return all the, the old hydrants to us. Okay. Um, that we stacked and stored is basically what it says in in the contract. All right. Um, so that one will be coming back to us, whether it's there for months. Yeah. No. Good. Is. No. I, it, that, yeah. that makes perfect sense. You don't want to have an issue with a fire or whatever, and have that ancient forty hydrant that somebody tries to jump onto. Right. Are they all that old, or anything usable, reusable? There are some reusable okay. hydrants that are up there that we've replaced over the years. Um, where there's a double main that's up there, there were some sections that when the hydrant was hit multiple times, it was abandoned. And you have the hydrant directly across the street, and it's off the laundry main, so it really wasn't, you know, a big deal at the time. When you start getting a few of those in a row, and you start spacing out your distance on that one particular side, even if you get a small two and a half line off it, you know, it's better than you know, having traffic try and get over the hoses or redirect traffic by having to run something across the sure. road. So, you know, we took uh, our best judgment and decided to put it in now, place. That's, you know, that's the winner. We have it. We had the crew. You know, the weather was with us. The hole was already there. Right, so, right. It was opened up. 
Right. Canada right. opened the hole for him. It, it, it was open. And, uh, Poor guy. So. Must, must have ruined his day. I, I bet it did. You know, <laughs> a couple feet either way, he would have cleared it and been on his way. Um, oh. Probably never saw it. Probably never felt no. it. I mean, no. It's not in that type of vehicle. No. Was that a stick or a hydrant? Right. Right. Yeah, what was that? As long as it's not a car. No. But, uh, Okay. All right. I'll transition over. Uh, and I, the big yeah. thing we all agree is the system impact was de minimis. No calls, no discoloration. That's really good. Yeah. It not only means the water is clear, the sediment has been somewhat eradicated. Yeah. Very good, Frank. Yeah, jump right over to uh, continued hydrant flushing. Uh, it's been three weeks now since we've been out and we've been flushing, uh, except for the first two nights. Now we're on daytime hours for flushing. And um, out of the three weeks, we've gotten a handful of calls of anybody that's experienced a disturbance. We've uh, responded to every call. There was uh, some light flushing that was done in those areas. Uh, majority of them were handled by flushing the owner's uh, soap on the house. Explained to them that uh, you know basically they may have been running their water uh, unknowingly while we were flushing during the day and pulled it into their service. It took a couple more hours to get into their home. And same thing, it, it can be easily flushed out. Um, everybody that we spoke to, um, I say we, meaning the, the crew, uh, is extremely pleased at the, the water quality, the way it's been. And um, they were actually shocked when they, they called that they had seen a disturbance where it had been so long since they've had any. And they were aware that we were flushing. Every person that, that we was talking to um, knew what was going on, expected it, but didn't expect it because it had been going on so well. Um, we've been on and off with the flushing, depending on what's going on as far as bacteria sampling, um, iron and manganese sampling, all, all the above. Uh, not so much that um, we're holding off because of that reason, but because of staffing. You know, we're trying to train the new people, get them out, um, see a few different things. And uh, so it's been working really well with the limited um, areas that we can put people. We're trying to keep everybody out of the treatment facility that doesn't have to be there. You know, obviously we still follow the COVID guidelines and don't want to uh, intermingle more or less the two departments. Everybody's been doing everything they possibly can to stay away from um, large groups and all. We just, we can't afford that type of situation. Oh, very good. Um, um, I'm sure you're already doing this, but institute one person per vehicle. Is that pretty much that's been when you're flushing? I know sometimes yeah. there's a couple of people going around, yeah. but we have the spare vehicles if you can, if they can stand it and it's, it makes physical sense right. for operator uh, certification, shall we say. Um, one person per vehicle is yep. what I prefer. Yep, for the most part, we have been handling that. There have been a couple instances, um, like on the, the, the hydrant break, we had people in, multiple right. people in the car, right. you know, masked up. Yep. You know, we uh, we do everything we, we possibly can. Um, it's just as, as indicated by the NFL and um, other right. other big situations. It's, you never know when it's going to right. rear its ugly head, and I know everybody's doing their best to just um, we to get um, casual about it. Right. We got to um, we got to stay vigilant, and in our own little world, one person disappearing for two weeks is a big deal. Right. Never right. mind a, a real you know long yeah. time. Right. No, you're exactly right. Um, so we uh, will continue to uh, flush during the day while we have the water and we have the weather. We've also been rolling in a few uh, hydrant flow tests, also helping with the flushing program in those areas that we may not technically be in yet. Um, there's actually one scheduled for tomorrow morning. Uh, 10 o'clock, that'll be out on East Main Street. We're gonna work with Rustic Fire on that. It's gonna be in the area of the uh, police station out on East Main Street for uh, pump flow calculations. They're, they're trying to, to tighten their numbers on a few things there. Um, we've had a few of these again, thankfully, no disturbance noted, water's clean from start to finish. You're comfortable with the water levels in the, in the storage tanks and the well production and... Yep, yeah, we've been, uh, we've been staggering these, uh, the flow tests and uh, monitoring when we are out flowing during the day. It usually uh, transitions to an hour or two extra at night for the water treatment guys to make up the difference. And uh, we use a little bit of storage at the same time, thankfully with the, the rain We've been able to gain on our storage, so uh, it's, it's been a win-win. It's, it's welcome to see it coming down. Um, we'll transition over from that. Uh, we have some uh, tank cleanings that'll be coming up. Um, we're going to lock in Cottage Street 
and we're going to save on the mobilization fee by doing both tanks on one location. Um, yeah. Small savings, but it adds up over not, time. Nothing makes me happy, as <laughs> you know that. That's yes. beautiful. Yes. Good um, you know, We anticipate good the, work. the cottage tree tank might not be as dirty as it has in years past, where we had that valve break last, yeah. it was last June. Uh, we purposely drained the tank, flushed the standpipe itself while we were there with the valve off, something that we typically wouldn't be able to do. So we should have some cost savings there um, for the iron and manganese removal in the bottom of that pipe. The uh, the ground storage will probably still be pretty dirty. You know, it's going to be a first cleaning. Since the treatment plant's going online, a lot of water goes in and out of there. It does sit, so it does settle out. That's basically what it's designed to do. And uh, as we get done with those two tanks, and we'll switch them over to the three million on Mansfield Ave, and the uh, center elevated tank will probably be the last one that'll be done. Uh, providing we can get all that in before the weather gets too cold and too dangerous for them to be up on the tanks. Are we going to paint Cottage Street at some point? It has been talked about what's the best thing to do with Cottage Street. Um, the exterior coating obviously is failing. It's down to the primer in some spots. Um, no bare metal. That's been noted on the previous inspection reports. Internally, the tank is actually still in very good shape. Um, I believe that's a 1957 tank. I'd have to really double check my numbers, but that, that's sticking in my head for some reason. We had looked at um, possibly replacing that tank with a glass lined concrete tank, like the center elevated tank is. And we could actually possibly go smaller. We wouldn't change the elevation, but we could go smaller in the storage holding that it has, because years back, everything was about how much storage you can have. And now it becomes a challenge to actually turn those tanks over on a regular basis and keep the water fresh. So by not using all the water in the tanks or turning them over completely, um, you can stop building THMs and HAAs from sitting on the water with the chlorine. So it's definitely something that was looked at. Um, I know Tara and I had some lengthy discussions about it, and the last that we had come up with on that, I believe, was it was very close to the same price to encapsulate that tank, sandblast it, remove all that now hazardous material, and paint it, and you still have a tank that's that old. Um, Structure-wise, again, it's not in that bad a shape. The, the catwalk has a few areas that could be welded. The ladder going up on the rung has a few of the rest areas where the seat folds down. That could use some work. Um, so we could definitely patch it and get it to go for a length of time. But in my opinion, I think it might be best to start looking at replacing it and either building in its exact same location or possibly moving to the left if there's enough property there. Um, that's to be determined. I mean, that's a, that's a hefty number. Yeah, probably, I can't remember, I think we were somewhere between 850,000 to 1.3 was a range that we were in. To paint? Uh, to remove and replace. And yeah. that was when scrap was good. Now that scrap is tanked, you're not going to get any value for the, yeah. what's going to be removed. What does it pay? That was close to the seven. Yeah, I, I think, think it was, it was seven. seven. That's, seven. What, that's yeah. what's stuck in my mind too, that's why I see it for a, a small 10% or 15% more to get a fresh tank the proper size. Right. Um, I think it's good money after bad to patch up the 150 year old tank or 70 year old tank. Right. But uh, discussion for another day, good information. I'm glad the interior is good. That means the water we're getting out of it is good. You, you put it in your rotation and we'll just, yeah. do you, is there a benefit to making it half so you don't have as much to turn over, you're probably already doing that. Right? We've done every different scenario there is. Okay. Um, when the weather gets colder, we have ice layers that build up, so you do fluctuate the levels of your tank to keep your top yeah. your levels um, from building one, one layer and creating a false top. Um, we try and keep it as full as possible, especially now with storage uh, being difficult to uh, maintain. And uh, we want to keep the pressure at a steady pressure. That's where you get your, your system from. Um, it's something I know that Tara and I have spoken about numerous times and it, it's kind of, uh, it's been put to the side with five and six definitely take priority over just about everything right now. Sure. Uh, but it is not forgotten about. It's in the, uh, I believe it's in the short term uh, capital improvement plan. So it'll be within five years. And I think uh, it was also in the master, which was the 20 year plan. Correct. Right. Um, if it was something that was pushed off, I mean, five years goes by pretty fast. It, yeah, it, it, could, it could easily get pushed off. Um, you know, we'd have to get some better numbers, um, really narrow down. We probably have to survey our land that's there to see what we have and how close we could come to the abutters if mm -hmm. we did want to build a new one and keep the remaining one in place until we do the transition. 
Um, but there's a few different things to look at. Uh, Very good. Yeah, that's, that's definitely going to be a, a hefty number, but again, it's... How do they do the concrete tanks, Frank? Is it, is it formed in place? Is it delivered? It's formed in place. They, so it's a slip form kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, it was pretty impressive when they built the center right. to see that go up. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. The small ones can be done with panels. Yeah. That's yeah. what they do. Feels like panels. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. I mean, that's uh, that's 500,000 up in the air right there. We got 367 at at, uh, at the center. So, I mean, we could probably go with another similar tank as long as we have the same elevation. Mm -hmm. You know, we have uh, an altitude valve that's at the center tank that we don't use right now. It's actually wide open because the cottage tank is slightly higher. All right. So if we uh, we balance those out with. Uh, you know, exact measurements. Right. We still have it there. It's still able to be used. If you take one tank offline, you could typically use it as a, as a false head. I got you. And have it closed. But uh, the treatment plant and the SCADA system run everything. The altitude valve is, is a good fail safe. Yep. You know, it's pretty wild. You could have something to hang up. Uh, we'll jump over quick. Just touch base about the, uh, the two articles that we have in this Saturday's town meeting. Um, been a couple questions about it since uh, it's been able to be read online. Um, basically, we're asking to do a little bit of housekeeping. We have monies left over from two water projects. Uh, we, they both came in under time and under budget, so there was um, a remaining funds available for each. The first one is actually Homes in East Main Street. Um, that came from, originally was funded by retained earnings. We have an extra of 191,250 on that leftover, and the second article was from the Pine Street. We have uh, around 820,400 leftover on that project, and uh, we're going to ask the uh, authorization to use both of those funds to pay for the our portion of the Mass DOT project. The original estimate on that that came in from the state engineer was around 580,000. Uh, after review. Um, between you know ourselves here and Weston and Samson had looked over the uh, the spreadsheet that they had that they were looking at. Uh, there were some things that were missing as far as some of the quantities didn't add up. There were a few things that just were not on there. <coughs> we bumped the estimate up to 700,000, which is what we had asked for at a previous town meeting. We did get authorization to borrow up to that 700,000. Now that the contract was awarded and the lowest bid came in, we were actually notified that our portion is 809,000. So we still fall short, even by increasing the estimate, some 300,000. And we all know once work gets underway and they run into a few other obstacles, it'll slowly climb. Exactly. Um, so and are we going to use the borrowing or are we going to use totally the retained earning funds? Well, we want to use both. The uh, Pine Street was borrowed. It was borrowed in its entirety. Uh, that project originally came in at 2.7 million. The uh, money that's left over on that there is uh, what we got? Yeah, 82400 So that there alone would cover the 809. That is the estimate right now from and Pine Street finished paid, but do we need money for that? There is money set aside already. Um, so that's it's done, done, done. Right. I dotted keys crossed and 800 and change left. Right. All right. Yep. Um, they have to transition. They actually should be out next week to, to mill and pave that road. Um, Letters will be going out possibly tomorrow to remind the residents that uh, there's going to be some disruption to get the final trench paved done. And then uh, in the, I would say probably late summer, uh, the Norton Highway Department is going to come in and do their final pave on that road. That's what that money is allocated for. Um, so we're going to be asking the townspeople to approve basically the, the, the swap of this money. The borrowed money has already borrowed, we're already paying on it, we're just not utilizing it. The other money that's left over from the retained earnings is sitting there and at the end of the year would go back into our retained earnings fund. Um, we're just trying to clean up these two, make sure we have money in place to pay our portion of the DOT project, which could exceed the 809 estimate, which is, is not uncommon. Um, and uh, then we would actually, if we get the approval in the, we're going to assume it's going to be the May meeting, um, which would be in the spring, we would actually rescind the original article given us authorization to borrow the 700 because mm -hmm. there's no purpose for it. Uh, by leaving that in place now, if for some reason the townspeople don't decide to approve the transfer of these funds, 
we can borrow the 700 and then we'd have to go back and amend that article. Yep. Um, so just moving a few things around, trying to clean the, up. The 700 and change borrowing is just a placeholder now. You don't have to pay on it if you don't actually borrow it. Exactly. We have permission still to do that. Yep. Okay. Yep. It, is, it is there. We have the approval to borrow up to that amount. We did not borrow it. Um, hoping that these funds here will clean up a few accounts, put them all in one, um, take care of that each name, okay. and go from there. Uh, that is what I have for updates. Very good. Thanks, Jim. Um, as it is um, 6 o'clock, I think we're on to the um, discussion of our blue drop water machine. Um, I think um, I'll just open things up and as, uh, as Frank has mentioned, the uh, quality of our water is um, very good at the plant and also very good at most points throughout the town. Um, as, uh, as we have these minor impacts to the system, it's evident that the flushing that we've done or two flushings that we've done have removed a lot of the sediment. And um, to have the blue drop machine idle um, as we move into winter, and uh, any remaining water in the machine freeze and cause damage to the machine, which obviously our municipality will be responsible for. Um, I'd like to um, like to go ahead and have uh, Blue Drop come and remove that machine. Um, whatever work we have to do inside the building, um, we can uh, we can cut and cap or stub whatever utilities we moved over there. The large water line that we did and the uh, electric. Uh, maybe it's just an unplug or somehow um, lock out, tag out, so that nobody gets on that uh, outlet. But um, to keep a, uh, a mothball vending machine, which as COVID ramps up um, throughout our state, and uh, I see the, the grid every night on the news, and it's not it's not decreasing, especially as we move into indoors. You know, during the winter with everybody being unable to social distance and stuff, I, I don't see it as a, uh, a viable option to reopen the machine. So um, my individual vote will be to uh, send that back to Blue Drop. And um, I'm sure as any business, if in the future we need one, they'll scar you right back. But I, I see no point in leaving it mothballed. Um, as I look at my annual stuff that goes away the boat has to go away for the winter all my rv stuff it's all going to be pickled and uh i see no point in um preserving the machine where it is just to have more expenses later um the blue drop has been generous enough to give us these past couple of months at no charge um, i'm hoping there is a no charge to remove it or maybe a very small fee but i'd like them to be uh notified that we want it removed as the weather becomes colder and we will no longer need the machine. And how everybody else feels about that, but that's that's my my thoughts at this time. Well I think with the water water quality has just been huge. I've been getting a lot of uh, um, good feedback from people that I've both seen in on social media. Uh, so the water quality is has been great and I know it's some people in town do still have periodic problems uh, it's nowhere near as much and with this as we talked about earlier once, once you do that second flush it's just major and it's going to spread that water more and more out into the outreaches of those desolate areas that we have that the water doesn't move all that often and you're getting the fresh water and over the old and with the new kind of thing as we had hoped, so uh, this this has been a great transition. This this uh, this plant, and um, I think it's time for the machine to. You know, but but what's well, what's good is that we're not deleting it and we're not taking it off the table. If we need it at some point, sometime. The utilities are the utilities are the, 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 they're, they're in place. place. They're just um, terminated for now. Correct. Yep. And, uh, in, in good conscience, I, I can't see opening that machine without somebody staffing it. There's been all these suggestions that, you know, supermarkets are selling water and all this stuff. There are other private people with vending machines. Well, we are held to a higher standard by the state as our drinking water 
sources, and that in and of itself is it considered by the state a drinking water source, and, and we can't, again, in good conscience, um, turn that on in a COVID environment without <coughs> a staff member there, and we, we don't have the people to do what we're doing, never mind man that thing, so for all, uh, all things mentioned, I think it's time to um, send that back. So I would, um, I don't know that we need a motion. I think it's probably mm -hmm. just a, um, a vote. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I think a vote might be on. All right, so a motion to. Um, All right. Any for the public to speak on that or no? Well, absolutely. I didn't know that anybody was out there. If um, anybody in the public wants to chime in, please go ahead. Sure. This is uh, Michael Tool. Um, you know, I, you know, I've been pretty vocal, uh, regarding the water machine and, um, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a mistake. Um, and I understand your concerns. Um, I think the, there are, there are, there are, there are basically standards of operations that the water commission could move forward with to open the machine. Um, but they haven't made many efforts to do that. Um, I guess one of the better questions I have, if you're not going to open the water machine, there seems there's still lots of complaints, especially with the water flushing of continuous brown water. What is the Water Commission going to do to supply people with non-brown water? And, and, and that first, I guess, is a question. And then the, the other part was a statement. I think it's a mistake that, uh, that, that you guys are, are about to vote to get rid of the machine and not open it. Um, is there are there possibilities to reopen the machine if we remove the responsibility from the water commission? So I guess there are two parts, three parts of my question. One's a statement on, on regarding um, the the procedures of operations. One's a, what options are you going to do to provide clean water for people that are still being affected by by the tingy the tingy brown water? And the, the third is, is there any other option of if, you, if, the, if the Water Commission doesn't want to take the risk, is there anything that we can do to mediate the risk that the Water Commission feels like they have? Um, sure, uh, Michael, thanks for uh, calling in. I have um, a couple of answers for you. Um, as Frank said earlier, um, in another um, of the superintendent's updates, um, some of the discolored and um, water complaints, believe it or not, are actually in the line from the main to the people's houses. And it's more difficult. And when we, when we normally flush, it's the um, scouring of the mains that we're doing because obviously we can't put that volume of water through a one inch service going to someone's house. But if the folks who are experiencing the problem, um, maybe, maybe through their um you know time at home now or whatever their their schedule allows if they set up a, a meeting with the, the guys from the, the department here um we can give a full flush through their spigot from the main under our um instruction or um, oversight and what we do um Mike, is put a uh a spacer in so the meter comes right out the folks aren't built for this um, amount of water because a lot of people are trying to flush themselves and get all frustrated and I, I understand what they're up to but uh if they can take the time and set something up with our crew um we put a spacer in and we rifle the water through the main through their service and believe it or not it really scours their service and it goes right out their spigot so it doesn't even enter their um you know the, the um the screens on the kitchen sink a lot of people have these high-end faucets that really clog up with the iron or their washing machines. That stuff is out of the equation and um, they just rifle it through and get that get that residue out of their services. And what we've experienced in the mains with our scouring um, high speed flushes that we did um, uh, once several months ago and more recently as we're doing now, um, the water coming out at the flushing point even far away from the treatment plant quality has improved drastically. So if the people can, can take the time and, and organize a little, a little, you know, interaction with the guys that are uh, COVID uh, proficient and it'll, it'll be, you know, everything safe. They really only need access to the basement and uh, they're happy to do that. And I think, um, I don't know that everybody in town needs it. 
but um, the ones that are having problems now, and for our own knowledge, um, us to you personally, it's good for us to get out there and see what actually is the water at the spigot or at the faucet, we'll, we'll say, because the water at the hydrant is super clean. We test, we look, we do our flushing, and uh, it, it's the results from the plant are all the way through town. So if somebody's having uh, discoloration issues now, um, we're saying it's, it's very likely it's in the line to their house. And we can we can we can minimize some of it. Um, some lines are old and they're iron pipe, and that's a that's a whole different concern. But uh, short of staffing that machine, uh, Mike, I don't see procedures that would make it um, in the municipalities with the rules and regs from the state um, even possible. But the that's you know as you know I understand what we didn't know at the beginning in March. And first of all, let me commend, you know, I, I know there's, there's, there's feelings out there that I'm an anti-water commission and water department person. I'm not. Uh, you guys, I, I, I recommend you guys, I, I, first of all, I'm coming into the fight a couple of years late here, and it's easy to pick on. Uh, it's very easy to pick on the water department in this town. It's very easy, and I, and I appreciate and I understand the challenges you guys are up against. So I don't want to, first, that's, I want to, I want to caveat what I say and, and, and any what seems criticism all the time from myself to that. Um, and, and, and I understand why the Water Commission voted the way they did because we were living in different times back in March. Um, we were, we really, we, no one understood what, what, what we were up against. Um, as we move into the, with the, I think we're in phase three here um, and we're in section three or phase three or something like that. <laughs> Hey, Mike, you know, Mike. Yes, and, and social things. Hold on, hold on. Speaking of reality, all the numbers that I see are picking up. Um, you don't have any information that any other medical professionals in our state um, don't have, and the numbers are increasing at an increasing rate. So if you want to talk COVID, go get a medical background and come back with some real numbers and research, and we'll listen to you. Other than that, it's just your opinion, and I'm giving you two more minutes. Okay governor's opinion the governor's basically kept us in there otherwise he would have backed us out to a different phase so don't don't think that it isn't about a medical opinion it's about guidance from the state and the state is basically moving us to those phases so don't 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 lecture me on saying that this you guys are refusing to move to move along with the proper phases with the state and it, and the, the town is kind of sick of, of just excuse after excuse. Over near the Pine Street area, they are consistently getting brown water still. And 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 you guys are doing nothing to address the issue. So, so I know you want to be you want to be you want to lecture me about about not having medical. You guys are not moving along with the state. If you were keeping up with the state, that water machine would be open. Just like Simpson Springs is open, just like all the other all the other paid service spring water systems are open. Those are private, Mike. I understand they're private, but we're not doing anything to we're not doing this thing. Give me a solution of what you're going to do for the customers because you've raised their bills and you raised their rates, which we understood the presentation last year. I get it. But but there is a certain part of the population and that, that their water is improving, but there's also another certain population that their water is still brown and we're not providing any services. And when they call in, when they, when I've gotten complaints and I get them and I can share them with the group if they wish, well, I get, I get texts on Facebook, called over the water department, left a message, no response. So I, I'm frustrated because I'm hearing it as, as, as a member of the select board and you guys don't seem to be taking the concerns of the customer serious. You, you, I understand that you have an obligation, and the select board has no say over as you, uh, over the water commission. But you don't seem to be taking the residents' concerns serious. Thank you for your comments, Mr. O'Toole. Is there anybody else in the public that wants to chime in on this? Yes. Yes. What do you got? Yes. 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 Let's Mr. Grant, I, I agree what Mr. Tool said. It is a time that we, it's a time that you are making a mistake in removing the water machine. I hear you, Peter. I wish, I wish there were more we could do with confidence to keep the public safe, but it's, it's very difficult with an unstaffed unit 
to guarantee the safety of every single person that uses that. What? Mr. Grant. Yes. This is Zach Tillis. Can I uh, make one comment here? Sure, Zach. I understand everything you're saying on the concerns on every side. Uh, what, I'm, what, what I would like to see, Don, is, is something a little more simple than what uh, uh, Mike is proposing. And, and, you know, I mentioned this in the past to a few of uh, the select board. We have a treatment plant. We spent $11 million, whatever it is on it. The water coming out of it is clean. Nobody's disputing that. Is there somewhere in town, anywhere in town, we could simply put a spigot that's on a motion sensor, that if a resident, for whatever reason, has brown water, whether it's due to flushing, whether it's their pipe in their house, whatever it may be, can at least go there with a gallon of water, with a gallon jug, and have clean drinking water. A simple spigot. Two two ninety nine at Home Depot. Uh, that's, that's, I think, that's not unreasonable to ask. Anywhere in town. Our, um, our silence is not negativity. Uh, we're, we're trying to think uh, for a second. And you know, a motion sensor, just like you go into the bathroom and you have, you don't touch the faucets. You have a motion sensor there. You wave your hand under it. There's no contact whatsoever. It's very different than the machine. The machine, you're pushing a button and there's contact. It's a simple, you know, motion design. Any public bathroom you go into, it has that today. It's not, you know, overly complicated. Well, uh, you don't have to give me the answer now. I think something that you guys should discuss it. You know, I think it's a, it's a compromise move. You have clean water coming out of the plant. Someplace where you know it's coming off a of main, it's clean. That somebody has access to clean water, 24 right. hours a day, in a safe yep. environment. That's all I'm saying. Yep, I, I appreciate um, the suggestion. We've brainstormed this several times and. Again, as we move into the winter, it's hard to keep that thing uh, frost free and the area around it not slippery. Um, and yeah, it has to be some kind of thing. I get it. Whether it's, you know, I, I get it. But I think you guys should just kick it around amongst yourselves. I think it would it would go a long way. Not only not only with providing cleaning water, but with restoring some confidence in the water department. As you know, you guys have batted over the last uh, coming months. For you know, I'm not saying it's all your fault, but you know. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Thank you Zach. Thank, thank you, Water Department, for listening, right? Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Well, Is there anybody else out there? Now I'll ask for a motion to send the blue drop machine back. Motion to send the blue drop machine back. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Can you do a roll call on a verbal call? Can you do a roll call vote, please? It's supposed to be by roll call. Thanks, Mike. I'm Luke Grant, and I vote to send the machine back. Uh, Mr. Bishop, Steve, what's your vote? Steve Bishop, I vote also to send the machine back. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. Now, um, water sewer project updates from Wesley and Samson. Who wants who wants to go first? Tara, please. Sure. Tara Vance from Wesley and Samson. Uh, provide an update on the treatment plant. Uh, had a conference call with uh, the contractors last week to discuss the remaining uh, items that were on the punch list. Uh, we reviewed the list, uh, discussed the change orders that they put in front of us as well as the outstanding utility bills that the uh, town has paid for um, and that they're in disagreement for paying for the portion of time when the plant was at least running but not necessarily substantial complete. So we're still in a little bit of an argument with that, but um, I added the utility bills as a credit to the to the actual change order uh, three, which all of the items on that list are items that we've previously talked to about over the last uh, eight months or so. Um, waiting for their response on whether or not they will sign it. Uh, they would prefer to not have the utility bill information on there. So 
we will need to negotiate that a little bit. Uh, we discussed uh, the recycle tank. Uh, they did order the paint several weeks back. Uh, it was like a three week or so delay to get the dual color system. Should be arriving sometime next week. I'm waiting for them to provide a plan for completion of that work. Uh, they did submit some additional information. We're checking off our list as far as the uh, ONA manuals and some other data certification sign-offs from all their subcontractors uh, for the plant. So most of the uh, punch list um, has been complete. Uh, there's just a few uh, larger outstanding items. Um, also, it was brought to our attention uh, uh, about a month ago or so that the uh, one of the handicap ramps right at the entranceway uh, of the uh, of Plain Street leading into the plant had been disturbed when they constructed the, uh, the water main. So um, waiting for a response back from the contractor on uh, completing that work. So the hope is that next week, hopefully we will have the in and that they will schedule a time to start that work. It'll take two days. Uh, the first code will go in, the second code will be in the next day. Um, and then we'll, we'll test it uh, within a day or two after that fill it and, and confirm. So the intent is to uh, coat the entire remaining portion of that tank. So we will have a fully uh, coated tank uh, at the end of this with a dual color system. So similar to the primary that we were talking about on the other tanks, you'll be able to notice that there's some erosion on the exterior color gray, and then you'll start to see the primer color uh, for maintenance purposes in, in the future. On the average, uh, the uh, manufacturer and I had, had a conversation previously when we put the first coat down, uh, or the first attempt down, I should say, on the, on the base of the tank, and indicated that, you know, five to 10 years, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty, uh, uh, you know, they're not gonna say it's gonna last 10, 15, but we're pretty confident that there's not a lot of debris and whatnot uh, that you're gonna have hitting the tank or anything like that. So pretty much uh, standard water residuals um, shouldn't be too much of an impact to the wear and tear on that coating. So in my mind, you'd probably get about easily eight to 10 years out of that before you might need to recoat the exterior prime. A primer should be fine and then just kind of recoat it. So, so long story short on that, um, I basically indicated to them, finish your work on the punch list uh, um, and we'll process all of the, uh, and, and finish the work on the recycle tank and the retainage will be released and uh, we'll process the, the change orders. I may get some letters back from them indicating that they uh, want to be uh, processed the change orders, at least in the interim. I indicated the commission standpoint on that. It's been long enough, uh, just get everything done. So um, they're committed to still doing the work, but they might do a little pushback. So I'll keep you posted on if we get any certified mailings from that. But I'm hoping the paint just comes in and they read the contract language and understand that they still need to complete the work and right. that's when they get paid. So. Um, the pushback's only going to initiate another waterproofing contractor hired by us to do their work and at their peril they wait. I'm sick of waiting. We're moving into winter. Things get harder in the winter. Um, they have dragged their feet on this so long. I, I really have <clears throat> not a lot of room. In the, we haven't even discussed um, <clears throat> the bond that they're going to have to provide for the town to give us, I don't know what a concrete research tank supposed to last, but ours is, it's bubble gum and it's attached and it's gonna work, but it's really not what we paid for. So they're gonna have to provide a bond type of insurance, assurance for, I don't know whether there's 30 years or 20 years, it's gonna have to be some fire out thing that, you know, cause this is leaked since day one. I don't know how it leaked, it doesn't really matter to us. Um, the, I can bring it back to a, a person understanding the car that they bought. This this would be um, taken by the manufacturer as a lemon law. I in no way, shape, or form think the tank needs to be reinstalled. That is just not practical at this time. But um, what the commission's pushback is going to be is the surety to give us what we bought. And right now, we don't have that. Nowhere in the design spec was to bubble gum this tank together so it lasted, you know, in, in Murphy's world, three to five years. I know it, it's probably longer than that, but, you know, I, I have to sit here and look at what the town uh, water consumers paid for, and uh, there's, there's a big piece of nonsense I mean, in that form of that research tank. Um, I was lucky enough to be there the day it was installed. Um, their friend Maverick didn't do many favors on that one. And they're gonna have to
provide stand behind the job that they did because Maverick's hands are the act of uh, Methuen construction. So Methuen's going to have to generate. I would like to hear their best offer. I don't want five offers. I want their best one first. For a surety bond going forward for no less than 20 years for that tank. And the town, of course, is, will be additionally listed and um, updated as the five-year period and then the 10-year period and so on, just like you would a road farm. We'll, we'll let them send a few certified letters about that and we'll see, how they, see how they like all that. I will discuss that with them. Super. Um, are there paving issues? I haven't seen the punch list myself. No, they actually did come out and re uh, recoded a few areas. They milled and overlaid a couple of the berms were Some in the areas that were yep. little, uh, basically they were installed and then the paving went above it. So it kind of uh, right. shrunk the, per the burn, if you will. So they came back out and fixed that uh, a little over a month ago. So that's that's actually in very good shape. Uh, at this it point. looks okay. It's pretty much yeah there are a couple little areas that over the winter um you could see that there might have been some settlement or just some ponding yeah. uh and that was kind of shimmed out uh there's a gate box that we uh had had tilted a little bit and they reset that and uh taped it back in so they did instead of doing patchwork they kind of did a much larger milled area across that front entrance as soon as you come in and start to make that turn towards the parking area so from right. basically that edge uh and, and, and back towards the parking area so um it definitely looks a lot better. Um, and then I think I'm trying to let you go through the punch list. I mean, they've, they've got some minor items here, but we're basically looking for sign off and uh, and certification of all the, the testing of all the, the pumps um, that were done, not in the factory, but actually on site. Uh, we do have some vibration at five that they were gonna come back out and have their sub come out and fix that. And then there was also uh, the situation at four. Um, all of the items that I haven't gone out to the site to check to make sure, but Fall River had been out there and replaced uh, uh, the electrical work that they had uh, part of their their uh, contract for the change order work, and uh, they were just going to come back and, and do some minor cleanup. Uh, they were going to fill some of the holes. And, 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 uh, That's good. So Fall River was a big one. That's kind of that was up. a big one. So that was scheduling wise, making sure that that was the timing of it all. It, it did go well. I mean, they they said it'd probably take about four hours, uh, but it might take up to eight. And uh, everything was done uh, in a timely fashion, and they were able to get done, um, you know, without any major interruption. Especially during we were concerned about the the drought and the uh, peak demand season, so it was working out. Plus, with the start of the flushing program, so um, that was a good. That was a positive in the last several weeks. So, so that was good. Uh, right. but yeah, we're still we're on that last uh, that last push. So um, at this point, I think uh, you know. I might have talked to our office, but I, 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 my intent would be to write a letter to them and say, you need to get this work done by this date. So if the paint comes in next week, that means by the end of, uh, say, the following week, they're done. And uh, the other items on this list, there's a couple little things that, you know, might be a little bit outstanding, especially the, uh, the wheelchair ramp that we weren't, uh, or handicap ramp, if you will, uh, uh, transition. It's uh, basically just been paved over. So right. it's a nice concrete pour with the, uh, the little uh, the rubber pad rubber pad on it yeah so um but for the most the part you know, they put temporary pavement over when they filled in that area yeah so they're on they're on sidewalks leading to or from it out there just across the bridge it's just, just the bridge, bridge. Yeah. 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 Right. It's, i know it's it's all spec and it's got to be done it just yeah. i don't see anybody using a sidewalk prior to or after that on it doesn't exist the entirety of the street you gotta start somewhere, I guess. So, so we'll see. I mean, if they and we'll need to go back out and where the actual pipeline was located, where they installed it, could they have moved it a little bit to uh, to get around that ramp versus uh, installing it directly across it? You know, it, it is where it is, and and it needs to be repaired. Um, so I'll keep uh, keep Frank posted if I get any documentation from them that they are claiming it as an extra, um, as it was an unforeseen condition or something like that. But. Um, you know, I wasn't out there at that, that. That was probably one of the first things that was done on this project a few years back. So, um, we're we're waiting to hear back from them on a couple items, but I think uh, the counter would need to uh, to respond in writing about certain other items. So we've 
We've updated the punch list at least based on a site inspection about a month ago. Um, and some information I brought the architects back out to confirm a bunch of the other items that, uh, that were on their punch list portion of it. And uh, most of them have been addressed, but again, there's there's just a, a few little things as well as a couple of larger items that we just need to get done. And we've been on the list uh, for you know, a solid six months uh, since we issued the list. Most of these items are, are not are not surprises. So um, another big item is the ad built for the uh, the site. So um, you know, we that was supposed to be provided to us uh, a while ago. So we haven't been able to complete our record drawings yet for that for the project. So a few things on our end that we'll need to do to clean up the project once um, once we get information from them. So and then deliver the final O and M manuals instead of just draft one that we have right now. So. So that's the treatment plant. Um, at Pine Street is uh, Frank said the water main project. So uh, the contractor is going to be back out next week, starting on Monday, to mill the roadway. They anticipate about a day or two of paving after that. Weather pending, their intent would be to work on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. They'll be milling the trenches, uh, the water main trenches across from basically the well access road to uh, Plain Street. Um, so that'll be next week. The road will be closed to uh, non-residents. And uh, we'll do the same detour that we did during construction. Um, Restage boards and, and detour signs will be up. The police will be uh, notified for detail. And uh, hopefully that work will be wrapped up by Wednesday of next week, assuming we don't have any rainstorms like today. So, um, And then, as Frank said, again, uh, you know, the highway crew will be out sometime next year um, uh, as they see fit to do the curb to curb overlay. So we'll get the nice uh, wintering with a, with a decent trench patch over there with a, with a nice finished coat on top to wrap that up. Um, so that's pretty pretty much uh, on uh, KJS is the contract that will be out there on Monday. Um, the next project uh, for an update, we have a meeting with Conservation Commission agent tomorrow. Uh, they'll be doing a pre-construction meeting just to review the wells uh, five and six replacement project. The first stage of that project is to get our driller out there to uh, develop the wells and, and complete the 48 hour pumping test afterwards. So. We'll be constructing uh, well five first, and uh, that'll take a couple months or so. But uh, the hope is to get the driller out there um, within the next few weeks or so, um, get the erosion control measures up in place, and then start that construction um, work. And then phase two of that construction will be when we actually publicly bid the, uh, the connection, the Santo seal, uh, connecting the wells to the to the uh, raw water system and uh, putting that towards the treatment plant. So. That'll involve some excavation and some trench work that'll require a little bit more uh, erosion control and whatnot, but we're at least getting phase one started. Uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow's our first day after getting our order conditions that we can start work. So get the pre-construction meeting started and hopefully uh, Frank Sullivan, our driller, will be uh, ready to go shortly thereafter. So um, he's, he was thinking more late, late October after speaking with him today. So. Um, getting him on the schedule. And then uh, I think the well six permit approval. So we sent in the information on the eight inch, uh, the eight inch test well information to DEP. Um, they still have a little bit more time, but we'll check back in with them just to see if they can get approval for that. But again, um, you know, there's there's going to be at least a month's worth of work out there for well five before they can even trans over to six. But once we have approval of that, we can construct that uh, well six as well. That's very good news. Yep. Well, conservation signed off in full. They did. Yep. Um, what's the first step there? Is it erosion control? Yeah. Very good. Yep. So, filed at the Registry of Deeds today. So. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a detail a lot of people uh, overlook, and it's a critical one. Yeah, they can't, <laughs> can't start without that. Um, that signature. So oh, my goodness. So we get that done. and. Very uh, good. Our wetland science is going out tomorrow, and um, hopefully uh, we'll get good news. So, and uh, I think uh, as far as the that's pretty much it on the water side of things right now. I think unless there's some other projects that we want to discuss. But, uh, no, I think um. I think the DOT project's kind of yeah slowly rolling, they're, they're and we're helping Frank as needed on on uh, you know so. Excellent. Going on to uh, the sewer, Steve. Excellent. Uh, yes, yeah, so Steve Peterson with West and Sanson. Uh, for the sewer update, the West Main Street uh, sewer project, uh, since the last meeting, um, we talked that they were getting close to getting all the main line in, and they have. So all of the uh, main line gravity sewer is in the ground. 
Um, they're still working on the cross trenches, and we're down to less than a handful. I think there's three or four left. Um, we're making good progress. A lot of little steps still have to happen. Things, dominoes still need to fall. Um, they're going to be continuing. We've been saying through November, and we're sticking with that. You know, the contractor has been pushing that they'll be done by the end of October. That's their goal. Um, we're going to keep saying the end of November, which is more likely what will happen. Um, and I know, you know, people are asking about being able to connect specifically to the housing authority. Um, it's been great, and they're, they've had good things to say about how the pump station site looks, and they're just continuing, you know, curious about when they can tie in. So. I told Frank, you know, at this point by the end of the year, this calendar year, we'll be ready. Hopefully sooner than that, but that's what I would tell people right now. Is the end of the calendar year, the town will own the system and be ready to start taking connections. And then there will still be, you know, final surface restoration work, specifically paving that will carry into the spring. Um, you know, but going through, um, in the short term, you know, some of the key things that have to happen, so they, you know, like I said, all the gravity main is in place. They need to finish the connection specifically. So today they did the CVS connection, um, and they have a couple more left on that section of pipe that flows from the top of the hill, basically from the high school and Honeydew down to uh, all the way down to the pump station at Wheaton. Once all those connections are in, they need to test that section of pipe um, so that we can actually connect the high school and yell the current pressure line that goes to the middle school the plan has always been to tie that into the gravity line that flows down to the pump station and once that is done they can there's a couple of the connections that need to be extended cannot be done until we can take that sewer line that's in the old abandoned water main out of place between the high school and the and Freeman Street, basically the, the top section of the sewer that will flow back to the pump station at the housing authority. So before we can test and approve that line, we need to get the high school onto the line that's flowing down to Wheaton um, and be in a position where we can take sections of that old sewer out, which will no longer be needed. What um, termination point yeah. um, do you anticipate is it all the way to the middle school at the source? Like, you know, how are we going to cut and cap that now? So, once it, yep. it is dormant utility, how is that? How is that wrapped up? Because yep. so there are the no piece, services off there, right? If you have a line through that was what sleeves through that yep. pipe. Yep. So from where the high school and Yale school connect, we'll cap it there. There'll be certain sections that get taken out for some of the services. And then up at the housing authority, where the high school line runs past the housing authority and heads down to the middle school, we're going to cap it there and take the line that continues all the way to the middle school and connect it to our gravity manhole that flows into the housing authority property. So that line will be in place. So now you'll have a line that connects at the manhole that flows by gravity down to the pump station at the housing authority and goes all the way to the treatment plant at the middle school. And the school will have an option to do something with that pipe. With a pump. They put in a pump station and they can then reverse the flow that's been pumping from the high school to the middle school to pump from the middle school. Fantastic. I'm sure they know that. They do. Um, We've had those discussions, but we'll need to I, I refresh want, I want, them. I want to reiterate, um, you know, that's, that's a huge, huge opportunity for them to because i know there's you know I, I, if when we talked about the first um meeting we had with members of the um state uh, representatives and whatnot i think the, the schools are paying like eighty thousand a year for maintenance on just that treatment plan so um and i know it's it's on everybody's back burner right now because of covid and the schools and whatnot but I'd like a specific um, letter or communication to the schools that say where it will be terminated and how it works in that manhole and how we're going to, maybe we flush it out. We are going to. Okay. And again, I'm not, I'm just kind of trying to think through this myself. So flush it out and replace it with some, you know, clean water and make sure the line is intact. And 
as utilities go, they don't want to wait too long because something will be compromised. Somebody will be doing a, a gas trench or a water service or some other thing and impact that um, the duct eye line that it's probably in, right? Yep. So um, the sooner the better they get on that. Um, I want to work hand in hand with the schools to lead them to this, mm -hmm. what they need to do going forward. It should be very cut and dry. Um, a lot of people say that um, we don't communicate effectively. Um, I disagree with that, and I'd like to just um, give them four bullets of what actually has to happen. We're, we're connecting that termination point to that manhole by gravity to the pump station at the Housing Authority and what we intend to do on the other side, whether it's run some water through it or however we want to add them, pressure it up and how we leave it. Because, um, you know, you don't want 20 years to go by and have somebody jump onto a air quotes good line that now has been compromised in three places because nobody knew what it was. Yep. But uh, that's um, that's something that we gotta, we got to get them on. Because uh, Superintendent Bayetta has said numerous times that he doesn't want to be in the sewer business and uh, for better or for worse, we are the sewer business. So let's um, let's make sure they get what they need to do and how they need to do it. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, we can do a, a wrap up memo on that. How have they speaking of the school? How have the transportation issues been for the traffic? The, the afternoons have been rough. Yep. The afternoons have definitely been rough. There's a lot of traffic out there. Um, even without our project, there would be a lot of traffic out there. But I'm not going to pretend that this the work that we're doing is not significant impacting um, the afternoon commute. Again, we we mitigated the morning commute issues for the buses by delaying the start of construction. Um, the police officers, as far as the afternoon commute, um, have worked as as well as they can to get the buses out of the parking lots. I think the, you know, at 2 o'clock the high school gets out, I think that's fine. The problem is that all those buses go out and then have to get back to pick up the kids in the L school and in the other schools. Um, and there's no way to keep all of the buses coming from all the different directions moving through the traffic area. It's, well, it's easy to get them out when they're yeah. ready to dismiss. They yeah. all go at once or right. they just, you know, shoot them out of the parking lot. Right. And the other thing we've talked about is that the bigger issue is that you know these buses have three five seven kids on them you know which i get right and that means that most of the parents Everybody are picking up and dropping off and it's just a crazy world so it's thing. not just getting the buses to and from the schools it's 400 other cars it's getting all the and that's not going to go away not, dur not during this project that's not going to go away when we're done digging out there that's still going to be an issue but but obviously you know two lanes of traffic will go a long way to helping that Good. And as far as where we're at with traffic impact, so the remaining services across the road will continue to impact traffic. My understanding is it has been less. They are down to one crew now. So they brought the two crews in, they hammered away, no pun intended, to get the uh, <laughs> to get all the, uh, the no main line in. in. Yep. <laughs> and um, so at this point, based on the work that's remaining, it's kind of hard to support two crews with the running around they're doing, and this has to get done before that can get done. A lot of dominoes. What about the, uh, the temp paving? What are they doing for, for paving over the winter? Yep. Just kind of reiterate. I kind of know, but I know for people who uh, have been reaching out to me about the bumpiness of the road and everything like that, and I get it. Mm -hmm. Since new construction. So, what are they, are they going to grind anything up or mill anything up and, and just temp pave it for the time being? Or are they going to do that at the end? So, um, yes, good question. That's the next thing that will, that will impact traffic is they are, they do have more paving to do. So once the, the line down to the high school I and mean, from the top of the hill down towards Wheaton is tested and approved and all those connections are, are in place, they will, everything is in temporary paving now. They will, the process is they rip out the temporary pavement. Mm -hmm and they put down a permanent trench. They do a one foot cutback and they do a permanent okay. trench patch. Yep. They're gonna do that before the winter because the next step that the state requires is then after that sits for 90 days, you then take a full lane width. You take two inches off the whole lane width um, and put a, a super paved top course down. Um, so yeah, this, 
Uh, yeah. these, these pipeline projects are, are really paving projects paving. in the end. You yeah, spend more on paving than yep. you do on the pipe. It's huge. I had, I had some questions. So, so, but, so for the winter, permanent trench pavement will be in place, which which will take out, you know, it will be, it, it should be you know, as good as new, and then it will get even better, you know, to a wider width. You know, basically, the trench will be. So they're, not, so they're not going curve to curve, right? They're only going to take a take a lane. So that they have to do full lane width, and the state has to come out. So there might be some areas where we do full width okay. if we have a lot of cross connections, because the cross connections have to be cut out and widened and paved. And, pay. the and if there's only you know 30 feet, 30 feet, 30 feet between, makes sense. You know, in the areas yep. where there are multiple ones coming across the street, sure. the state's just going to say just. So there will be some sections curve to curve. curve to curve. Okay. Um, and so you yeah, are profiling so the granite curving remains where it is yeah. in relation to everything else. So the drainage, new drainage that we installed is going to work as it yep. is now. Yes. All right. Yep. Very good. Thanks, Steve. All right. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, that's about it. There's still up on the top of the job up by Freeman Street. So the the force main that comes from the housing authority out to the sewer that flows down to Wheaton, there's about 150 feet left that has to be done a section. So basically there's a gravity manhole on either side that flows in two different directions. They haven't even dug up the road in between yet. Um, um, so that still needs to get done. So that's just, that's another crew that will be out in the road and impacting traffic at some point to do that. Um, and then we still need to run a stub out to Freeman Street and there's a lot, a lot of utilities, a lot going on in that area. There's several water. Um, so that'll be a challenging extension. You know, it's basically just from where the sewer is on the opposite side of the road. You know, we got to get a piece of pipe out to Freeman and off the highway so that a future connection can be made without digging into the highway. Again. Right there, um, so that that's that's basically the work left in the road. So we're getting there. Um, I think that's about it. We're also, you know, from a Funding perspective, we're putting together some um, applications. We've met, we had a uh, conference call with the treasurer, accountant, and town manager just to go over where we're at with the money, both the, the money going out and then more importantly from their perspective, the, the money coming in to pay the bills because we're getting money through the SRF program, but we also, um, you know, the housing authority's contribution. Uh, and we're at the point in the job where we really have to watch those two entities closely because all the money coming from the housing authority is reducing how much we actually have to borrow and we don't want to get to the point where we borrow more than we need to um so so we've got a another request going into the housing authority that um frank and rose have and are uh, ready to send them those are the original signatures so and rose has got what she needs she's going to send that no, out that went out this afternoon it already went out so another three hundred and eighty thousand from the housing authority which will bring us about 300,000 shy of their upset limit. So there'll be one more request down the road to bring them up to their commitment of about 1.58, I think was their commitment, in addition to the connection fee that they right. that they paid at the very beginning. Um, and then we've got an SRF reimbursement request. So we've been doing, requesting the full reimbursement from the state up to now, and now we need to start offsetting some of the money that's come in from the housing authority against the SRF reimbursement. So it's been, so we've been working with the SRF on how they, for their purposes, how they need to show all that paperwork. I think we've got it now. So we're putting in a request also with the state for another 400,000. So that'll give the, the town some money to pay. You know, they got about $250,000 in bills that they need money to be able to pay the bills, which will come from these two loans and then they'll be out in front of it again and be able to pay the next couple of bills and so Makes sense. just as an update so we're, no, all, we're all working it's together it's, yeah and you're, you're on the movie right you don't want to get ahead of yourself with the borrowing because you can't just give that back that's been borrowed right i mean the worst case you would just have a larger loan to pay back and you would have some money that you didn't spend that you collected that right. could go towards paying down the debt but the better way no. to do it is just make pay, the loan yep. as pay, small as pay on top of it yep. That's, that's where we're at and everybody's on board um okay so those are all set to go uh, and that's the update on west main the other thing we have is 
um, Cobb Street. So we we talked um, at the last meeting. We had presented a um, an agreement to help uh, Frank and the sewer department put out a package to make some improvements at Cobb Street. You guys had tabled that last time. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to discuss that um, or act on that tonight. It's up to you guys if you had a chance to look at it. So it's about it's basically it's our services to put a design package together. Um, put it out to bid and then um, have some spot inspections during construction. Um, you know, it's not a lot of real constructions. I haven't looked at this in a couple of weeks, but this was replacing the generator was the biggest the thing on there where the generator is, you can't get parts for it. Sure. You know, it's, um, but there was some, oh, the electrical, there was some code issues with the electrical and some leaking plumbing. No, it means, I, I, you I, know, I not to go into great detail. And there's a lot more that needs to be done out yeah. there. like. No, I've, this I've, is I've this seen is, I've seen the bulk of it, and I think yeah. um, this is the first step, short term stuff to bring it into code compliant. The worst first, and then next year's budget, we'll have some more money, I assume, to make some longer term um, repairs to that station. It's no, we'll get these station. we'll get these pressing issues. I think we should go ahead and um, authorize you folks to draw up a, a big packet and, and start getting that fixed. All right, so um, you want to make a motion to sign the contract for the Cobb Street, Cobb Street motion, Engineering. Motion uh, sign the, uh, the contract for the Cobb Street Engineering project. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I've seen, um, I've seen some pictures of the inside of the yeah, I need some help. Yeah. It's been a while since anything's been done on that. Yeah. And I think that's all. Uh, that's all I'm fogging up. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got to take the glasses off, not the mask. <laughs> there you go. Um, so that you can't see anyway. Any, anybody else have any um, thoughts? Okay, Mr. Bishop, your favorite. Oh, we have a next meeting. The 30th, so do we do the 20th? I think you set it for the 27th, and yeah. so now we want to change. No, nope, that's not, that works for me. Okay. Um, so again, Mr. Bishop? Uh, motion to adjourn. I'll second that. And